It's pretty um, spectacular the changes that you can do in their bodies when you free up the muscles. So the muscles, when you exercise them, can pump up properly and not be restricted by the fascia. So what we do when we're grooming with the cross fiber is you're going to start from the hind end and go to the front end. People ask me why do you do that? Well, that's how we're supposed to ride them. <laughs> that's the simplest answer. But horses stand like this. So their skin gets tight here. So we want to loosen their skin up so as we come across the top line, it's like they can slip their shirt off, lift their back, lift their withers, and be comfortable. I just had a friend yesterday say her horse is, you know, girthy, and she took to heart about grooming from the back to the front, and when she does that, by the time she gets around his girth, he's not girthy, he's not girthy to tack up, okay? So you work within your toler their tolerance, your safety, and if you can take 30 or 40 minutes to do it, or the first, you know, month, that's great to get to know the horse. But you can do a quickie, a very quickie, by once you know your horse's posture, you pull their blanket off because it's winter time, they're standing well, they look good, you can just go ahead and do a scan on them because it's a reproducible technique. It'll give you feedback and then you choose whether you're going to now have to groom them more or change your um, thought process of what you're gonna do riding. But we're gonna do the top line first. And then we're gonna go to the back and we're gonna do the core zone. And then we do the timing zone. That's the basic technique. We're going to not do this. This is kind of chaotic. A lot of horses love it. But the horses that don't like to be groomed, when you start to do the cross fiber, they're like, thank God. It's like somebody who can massage your shoulders and someone who can't. So the cross fiber <laughs> really makes a difference. And first and foremost, we want them comfortable in the skin. So you start with, a, at the point of the buttock, you start with a light pressure. And I want to move her skin around and she's very happy and well groomed. And I do short strokes. If I do a big stroke, by the time I hit something that, that she likes or she doesn't like, I don't know where it is. So you do short strokes. And winter time, it's definitely a warm up for you <laughs> when you're grooming. Right now, I'm probably using like maybe six ounces of pressure because her skin's loose and she's pretty soft in her muscles, but I'd like to feel it looser. You can start to maybe see where the skin's moving across the point of her hips. I go across bony protuberances because that's where the muscles insert. I go across hocks and I do the faces, point of the shoulders. I'm always trying to face the horse this way and monitor what they're saying and doing. <laughs> so I'm kind of doing a, a quickie here because we have, I think, more lessons to do and I'm happy to answer questions. I go across the spine on both sides so I make sure that I actually get good job. <laughs> that I get that skin moving across the spine. If it doesn't move across the spine, it's like having a corset tight. You're not gonna lift your back up. So you can see how her skin's starting to move along her rib cage, right? We want that skin to move all the way down. And so she's getting a little tight in her back. So sometimes if, if you hit a sensitive spot, um, you don't ignore it. You lighten up. You might do Ouija board light. Ooh. <laughs> you want to back her up a step. And as she's moving, you see where this set of ribs is kind of compressed, right? That's pretty significant because we need water, but more importantly, we need oxygen. If we're not getting oxygen, we're not going to perform well, and we're not going to recover well. So I might do Ouija board light. 30 to 60 seconds. If it's not making a difference, then I move forward because it might be part of the fascia and the muscle coming in here. So little sections. Again, I'm doing lighter and that's what you want to start at light. This is a great time of year. Shedding year time is a great time of year because everybody's itchy. So see how much more skin's moving down around her um, girth here. Coming up through here. 
I am, yep. Want to come up into the crest. Some horses are sensitive in the pole. Good girl. And just when she put her head down, there was all kinds of nice releases in her withers. And that's the nice thing when you have your hand on their body, you can actually feel what's happening to their spine, how their muscles are relaxing. So now I did a little quick area through the top line zone. So I'm going to go back to the starring the far. So I have videos on my website, um, drpatbona.com, that talk about some fun techniques like starring the far. So I used to just say, go every which way. But when you think about it, these are actually spokes coming out like this. So I will typically take three legs of the star. If you find a vector that actually helps the horse's posture, then that's probably a good um, leg to go ahead and do. You can go across here. She's pretty level through her croup, but she looks, she's, she's got a nice waist. We need waists, but it looks just a little tight here. So I might take that and you don't have to do a really big star, but you can if you want. You can take it all the way up there because that's the thoracolumbar area. That's where we have lots of issues. That's where the back of the saddle is. So I'll do a third leg, and it's always nice to come up to the sacrum, but you can just, as long as you come across the point of this hip like that, then you're going to help to loosen, see this tissue, the skin, so it's moving because if you have a tight belt on, you're not going to wiggle your hips. <laughs> so I teach uh, other professionals and I want to do videos for the, my the horse owners about horses with uh, rotator cuff issues, tennis elbows, plantar fasciitis. So the horse's rotator cuff muscles are down this part of the shoulder. They're the ones that help us to rotate our arms out. If they're not working, the horses can't really pick up their shoulders and move and bend. So always when you do the star pattern here, make sure one line is coming up that spine of the scapula. You see how nice her skin's moving, right? And there's a little spot back here. You'll see some horses look kind of gnarly. It's an attachment point for the scapula, for the tricep muscle. So if that's sore, they're not going to want to extend their foreland. If that's sore, that'll quite often pull their back down here so they're more hollow on this side. So if you come up this way or if you come this way, you still want to go across that point. And if I come up this way, what I'll quite often do is come up the crest if I want to go ahead and give her a little bit more definition. If we look, you can see where she just kind of looks a little thicker here. Now she does have a bite here, a little thicker there, but that's an area that I want to like separate. So I want to kind of carve through that because having a dent here will pull them down. When they're down there long enough, this gets tight from trying to pick them up. So once you release this on the vertical, <laughs> good girl, you might have to look on the vertical line and say what's restricted up here or what just isn't pretty. You know, her crest drops down here some. So I might take that star up and through there. And I'm literally pulling on her withers. She's very happy. No. So it's kind of like when you have a chicken leg and those little sections pull apart. That's the fascia that we want those muscles gliding. So we're literally trying to dissect those looser. So coming back to the core zone, now that we've done the top line, we do the core and she won't be so sensitive through her hamstrings. I go in between on a regular basis, uh, the horse's legs, but you wanna be more cognizant about how they're feeling. So generally the direction that the hair grows is the direction of the muscle fibers. So you go across that. So I'm going across here. And even horses with stifle issues, you'd be surprised. So-called stifle issues, 
They like their stifles done. It's <laughs> got nice muscling. This is an area, of course, we do want to be sensitive about or aware of and because they can be a bit ticklish. There can be some tightness in through there and there's not a lot of flesh in through there. So that's where their abdominal organs are. This is the back of the rib cage in through here. So I used to teach you can go all the way just up and down because we're getting in between these muscles. Now I like people to take little sections and again, with her, we see this area. It's, the ribs are rather almost too open, like she has too much motion through there. So that means this area that may be sticking out normally may be a little bit tighter. And you see how she's soft up here now? So you can see where it's a good, and her skin's moving all the way around. It's a good warm up for them. It's a good workout for you. I'm not just using my shoulder, I'm using my whole body. And I'm feeling her lumbars loosen up down there. Just nice. And what I do, because the abdominal muscles insert this way, so you go along the angle of that rib cage. And now that her top line's warmed up, it's okay if she lifts her back. You don't want to ask a horse to like forcibly lift their back if they're not warmed up. That's the beauty of doing the posture prepping. It's a warm up and they'll lift. She's lifting her back nicely there. See how she's growing up through her wither some? So these are um, the shoulder muscles. So I'm going across those. I've already done the star pattern. You can do the star pattern kind of whenever you want, but we did that first. And anywhere that there's a profile of the horse is typically where you're going to go across those fibers. We know she has a dent there. I might do some extra. Good girl. I might come up into that dent some. And you're going to go on her cervical spine. Ooh. So if I'm not sure, I lighten up, I take short strokes. Good girl, very nice. For the chest muscles, I go just in between. Hello. I know, it's tough. And why do you think that's sore? Does anybody have a guess? Well, we know that she's uneven up front. Right. So she's dealing with a lot different forces and we're asking her to go square and she's getting better and better but that's gonna have some tension built in through there, even when she's standing around and um, stomping flies. It's the elbow, it's the shoulder joint. This is the bicep, this is the tricep. So we want her to lift and extend, lift and extend. Hi, sweetheart, I know. Almost done. So, Optimally, you do the top line first on the right and then the top line on the left. <laughs> no, we can just do everything on one side if you want. But it's a nice thing to compare <laughs> when you're first starting, right, with your horse. So with the legs, when I say you can do a quickie, when you know your horse, this is what I do. I go like this. I kind of know her. You can see I'm putting some pressure. This is my top line scan. She telling me anything's wrong. No. But I always go back here and I say, is the skin moving across her Gaskins? No. If that's not moving, that's like having a tight boot. The skin on her hocks, I'm moving it on the inside, it's not moving on the outside. It's not moving on the outside from the inside, but it's moving here. When I do this here, it should move like that on the outside. So if you do a quickie, that's great, but you have to check the Gaskins and the Hawks. And if that skin's not moving, you want to warm that up because that's what we want, right? We don't want to have to walk them for 10 minutes or 15 minutes to get this. We want them to come out and be doing that. So it's well worth it. And quite often if a horse is tight through there, one or two like sessions of grooming, two or three minutes per leg, 
that'll typically stay freely moving because the body's a self-lubricating system. Unless there's a pre-existing pre condition, which then we can still tend, but we're breaking up the negative cycle so the body wants to heal and to be healthy. Again, so you're going to work within your safety. And I'm pulling. I'm going across that chestnut's really good. So the fun thing about the dents and dings, if you're out with a friend, watching them ride, you're a trainer, you're teaching a lesson, new horse, and they're not quite moving evenly, and you see this big dent there, you can have that rider ride the horse up, get your finger in there, work in there, pull some arnica out, work through it, and that horse will walk off and trot off better. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's really, really fun. So this should all move nicely. If you have an older horse, has ring bone, side bone, joints get their nutrition through movement. If you're feeding lots of good product, but the joints aren't moving, the joints aren't getting the full benefit of it. We like legs to be nice and clean. You wanna come back underneath those fetlocks because the sesamoids are there. They have to be able to not be compressed, like we don't want our kneecaps compressed, so that we can go ahead and sink down into our knees and our ankles. So now, can you see that little bit of movement now that I'm on the inside? Can you see the skin moving on the outside now? And I didn't, it's not here, you wanna step her up here? She's so good, I don't think she's gonna kick anybody. Cause it, good girl. So, see how it's starting to move in here? Different areas, do you see that? So, working on the outside and then working on the inside. And again, loosening that up relative to going up in between the tendons and the suspensories. They're like pistons. We want those to be able to glide like that. So you do want to go up in between those. I come all the way up into the hock. So now, see how that's moving so much better? The cap of our hock's moving, the skin, and that'll improve. Um, you can do more, but over a couple of sessions, that'll get much, much better. One of the other um, new videos that I put up was about improving flexibility by improving joint mobility. So she's a little, how old is Grace? 17. 17. So horses can run and twist and. That one is real tight. The, the, the right one's pretty tight too. Yeah. They have to be able to go like this. If not, they're gonna get tense through their shoulders, right? So this is a big, big deal. If your horse isn't comfortable and you know they have something going on here, you might pick their feet up and do them first. So you can do it with the hind feet. Um, it's a little trickier, I show it on the front. Um, so when I work on a horse and they're tight here, I'm mobilizing and I'm trying to get their <laughs> sesamoids moving. And I thought, their skin's tight. <laughs> so. It's easy, thank you Grace. You shake the foot and you go like that. <laughs> She's not happy about flies. She's defensive about her feet. Oh, is she? Oh, you'll be so happy I go across the bulbs, down into the pastern joint and I'm shaking and I'm scrubbing. And guess what? She's not as unhappy, right? <laughs> She's much happier. And at the same time, look, I'm loosening her elbow up, I'm loosening her shoulder up, maybe all the way up into her withers. And now look how much looser that is. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> ah, thank you. She's, oh, you can have it now. <laughs> Take it, have it forever. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Oh, sorry. And you can kind of see your whole body moving when a horse is grazing, horse is happily on a, 
a trailer. You should see literally their coffin boom moving around the top of their coronary band. Then you know they've got some good shock absorbers. So nice. What do you think? So one of the other fun things I like to relate to about the she was excellent. Some horses you find a big dent and you go to touch it and they're like, no. That's when you might want to go ahead and put like some Sorno more on it to desensitize them. I like one TDC. Takes the inflammation out and then you can, you know, carefully work deeper. Other horses will be like, get it and lean into you. So, and it could be the slightest thing that changes the whole horse's body. I've seen that over and over again. Quickly, I saw this gray mare jumper, like no dents, no dings. What's going on? But her posture wasn't perfect. And on the other side of her body, she had something that looked like someone shot a BB and it didn't penetrate, but it dented her. And I worked on that and she just went, oh. then I went back and she had all kinds of dents in her neck and her shoulders, but it was that one part. Just like when we pull our hair back in our ponytail, and you have that hair striving your nuts. You take it out, you put your pony pail back in, it's still there. The third time, what do you do? You pull it out, you pluck it. So sometimes when you're doing more specific things, you're just plucking those adhesions, that scar tissue, that then is gonna help them to relax. It's like taking a stone out of their shoe or out of your shoe, it's just going to go ahead and help them to relax their whole body, so.